Hi there, welcome. Today I'm going to try to carve something new that I've never done. And I really like these old vintage paper moons. I've liked them since I was a kid. And I went online and, you know, took a, a look. Some of them are <laughs> fairly creepy, honestly, but I tried to find one I like. I am going to uh, put it over on, I think I'm going to put it on a piece of birch. I'll take you back and uh, remember I'm a beginning carver. And also shout out to Jordy Johnson. He's the one that got me started. Check out his channel. I will, uh, I'll bring you back. So if you don't know what a paper moon is, this is a paper moon. What happened in the 1920s and 30s, there would be a large constructed cardboard moon and it had a seat hidden in it. And people would get their prom pictures or wedding pictures on a paper moon. So I'm gonna take this moon and transfer it over to, I think, this little birch candlestick. It's going to be a tight fit. The problem with the birch, you see how lumpy this is? Like, I can push and the bark's bubbling. So I'm probably going to shave that area. I'm going to try to leave bark on the back side so people still know it's birch. If I got room, I'm going to put a candlestick on the top. I don't know. It might be tight. I'd have to be... Yeah, I could probably get it in there. So I'll try to make this into a candlestick when I'm done. So we are going to start off by using this Fordham shaft. This is a uh, one quarter inch extreme cut saw flame burr. So I'm going to use this to skin the bark and I'm going to try to leave just a little on top and bottom so it holds, but there's going to be a lot of skinning on this. So let's get started. It's going to get dirty. Okay, so now we got to skin about another thumb's length out. All right, let me go do that. I'll be back. Okay, I've skinned off some more. I think I'm going to tilt it a little like this. Oh, we're close. Really close. If I bring it down here, I mean, we're just a little off right here and here. Okay. So here and here. I'll be right back. Okay, before I forget, I got to line up the candle hole. I hope that's center. We'll find out, won't we? Alright, the next stage <clears throat> is I'm actually going to use a spray glue to put this on. I don't usually almost never uh, use a pattern, but I, I uh, normally freehand stuff, but I'm just not feeling like freehanding it today. So in case some of you guys don't like freehanding, this is a way to do it. You can <clears throat> spray this stuff and literally just stick it on. So we'll spray, oops, we'll spray the back of this. I even put a little on here too. Let it sit for a minute. Once it gets tacky, stick it together. And that is why I have these spectacular gloves. <coughs> so normally these things are uh, 
you know, oh, I see a little dry spot. Hold on. Um, you know, like a, a vintage paper moon, they would it would be straight, but I kind of want a little angle to it to make it more fun. So I'm bring it down more. Oh, like this. Damn it, the bark's getting in the way. Uh-oh. It's not going to fit right there. I'll have to do what I can when I carve it now because it's stuck now. Ah. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to let this hot mess dry for a minute because now my gloves are all messed up. It's getting grabby. Maybe you've dated someone who's been grabby. I don't know. But since we're looking at prom pictures, there we go. And maybe I'll put a star here or something. I have to get to that when we get to that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of cut this out since there's a lot of detail work. I'm going to use the Roto Zip. It's a tile cutting uh, burr. And it's on a Dremel Flex shaft with an RTX, Black & Decker RTX. Here we go. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Everything's roughed out. Uh, you try to take the low points out now on the drawing. Uh, I probably got to do the nostril. The eye's really delicate, so I'm going to switch here and get to a much finer bit, the, the finest one I have. And hopefully we can make all this work. Okay, so I'm going to be switching over to, let's see here, diamond bit flame, one eighth diamond bit. And we'll try to do the eyes. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to turn the speed down a little bit, go into medium. Alright, so that was high speed for you guys, but it took me 20 minutes to do this. So you can start to see the face is getting cut in. I haven't quite got to any of that yet, but that's pretty easy. See, you can use a transfer like that, but the hard part is making it look 3D into the wood. You have to cut in the high points and the low points. So we're getting there. I'm going to smooth all this out, bring it down. Uh, I'm going to switch to a larger burr, and because I was using this diamond tip, it took forever, but it's very, very smooth. I doubt I'll have to sand much at all 
because you can lose a detail, this fine detail here, so easy. I'm probably not going to sand it at all. I'll probably just go over this a little more with this. Smooth it good. And then, uh, then we're in business. One thing I forgot to mention is if you want this to look 3D, uh, it's all about undercutting. And what that means is you get the tip, you have to make this thick enough that you can actually go under it on the sides and cut in. Now with this tip, it's really hard. It's a lot of work, but because this is such detail work, um, I can't really go to my bigger, bigger tip without probably destroying half this. So it's just going to be a slow cut in. And the way to make it look 3D is, you know, you go under as far as you can reach without destroying the piece. And with these, you just make hard lines underneath the best you can. Okay, so hopefully you can start to see it better now that I've carved away some of the space. Um, what I'm going to do next is probably put in a star. And I think the way they used to do old-fashioned stars was just like four points. Something like this. I don't know. Maybe a little better looking one than that. I hope that's good. So I'll put that in. Okay, so here we are, and I've got a star sort of shaped in there. I'll cut it better. But, uh, soon I'll sand it, and it'll come to life. What a lot of people don't realize is that took another 15 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Cutting away all this dead space takes a long time. So you'll see, when you guys look at it, you just see the carving, but to get it to be 3D and cool looking, you got to cut all the space around it out. And uh, sometimes that takes a long time. All right, I'm going back to the diamond burr to do the shape out. Normally I would do a more aggressive burr, but we're into some really delicate work and I'm afraid aggressive burr will just kill it. So this is gonna take heart, uh, more time. Okay, so I'm pretty much done. I'm going to do a light sanding. And then I'll stain it. Or do something with it. Um, I would have probably, if I had a choice, done a bigger piece. So you could see the moon all in one shot. But it's kind of cute. You twist it and it looks like... The moon's twisted a little. Alright. So the next thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to torch it before I sand it. I'm going to try to stay all the way away from this face as much as possible. Uh, if you burn this, it'll burn a lot of the detail away. So I'm going to burn the night sky in. Now this is birch. It's highly flammable. So have a, some water nearby. The bark will just go up. So I'm going to first burn this because uh, since it's a candle, candles have a hard time burning stuff that's already been burnt. So you want to burn it just as a safety thing.
You know, I think I'm going to change my mind because this is so delicate. I think I'm going to paint this instead. So I'll paint over this. I don't usually like to paint, but I don't see a way I can burn this in without destroying everything. So I'll let's sand it, see what happens. Okay, sanding is pretty much finished. I did notice one or two parts I gotta go fix when I was sanding, so I'm gonna go do that now. So this is finished. It's painted, sanded. Um, I put a little black in the accents and then sanded out everything else. And because the birch is so small, um, the moon kind of twists back on itself and it makes it look a little more comical. I like it. It looks kind of vintage silly. That uh, More whimsical is the word I'm looking for. So I painted the background black, and the white is actually, you can't tell, but it has been painted with glow-in-the-dark paint. So I'll hit it with another coat, probably. Usually they're transparent, but what will happen is after you put enough on, it'll start to turn white and hazy. But on this, the wood's kind of light, so you could get away with it. Anyway, there you go. Got myself a paper moon. And there's my initials.